Invasive Ductal Carcinoma. Our overview is defining invasive ductal carcinoma, also known as IDC, causes of IDC, preventatives for IDC, treatments for IDC, and surviving IDC. Invasive ductal carcinoma is a pathological condition that can have several different symptoms usually found by yearly breast exams, yearly mammograms, or sudden change in the physical appearance of the breast or nipple. Finding a lump in the breast or armpit and then a nipple secretion from the nipples, redness, dimpling, puckering of the skin, or breast, or other signs would be evident signs of breast cancer. IDC are abnormal cells forming in the milk duds of the breast, which spread beyond the milk duds into the surrounding areas of the breast tissue. These same cells can spread to other parts of the body. This is where the term invasive comes from, invading other regions, organs of the body, and not just staying in the ductal area. There are several known causes for this horrible disease, BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations, estrogen-fed breast cancer, women who menstruate early before the age of 12, or complete menopause after the age of 55. Other contributing factors are being null appearance, no offspring, or having children under the age of 30. Furthermore, excessive alcohol use, exposure to radiation, and aging can contribute to the development of breast cancer. Unfortunately, there are those cases that there is no known cause, it just develops. Symptoms of breast cancer would be a lump, auxiliary lymph nodes, veins, inverted nipple, or some type of discharge. Prevention plays a large role in staying breast cancer free. There are many steps you can take towards breast cancer prevention. Some risk factors such as family history can't be changed. However, there are lifestyle changes that you can take to lower your risk. Breast cancer prevention starts with healthy habits, moderate alcohol use, the more alcohol you drink, the greater the risk of developing breast cancer, smoking, accumulating evidence suggests a link between smoking and breast cancer, particularly in premenopausal women. Giving up smoking is one of the best things you can do for your overall health. A healthy diet, obesity and poor vitamin and nutrient intake can do much damage to your body, not only in general, but for breast cancer production as well. Being obese increases the risk of breast cancer. This is especially true if obesity occurs later in life, particularly after menopause. Limited hormone use. Over a period of time, limited hormone use can also prevent breast cancer as well as other cancers. Combination hormone therapy for more than three to five years increase the risk of breast cancer. If you're taking hormone therapy for birth control or menopausal symptoms, ask your doctor about other options. Hormones can be managed with non-hormonal therapies and medications. Breastfeeding might play a role in breast cancer prevention. The longer you breastfeed, the greater the protective effect. Lastly, always pay attention to the changes that your body may have as well as performing self-breast exams. Treatments. Several factors determine how IDC can be treated. First is the staging factor, the TNM system. Second is determining the hormone receptor status. The TNM system, T is your tumor size, M, lymph node status, the number and location of lymph nodes with cancer, M, metastasis, whether or not the cancer has spread to other areas of the body. This determines aggressiveness of the cancer ranging from one to five, one being in the early breast cancer stage and five being at the metastasized stage. Hormone receptor status, some breast cancer cells grow with the help of estrogen and or progesterone, which are female hormones produced in the body. These cancer cells have special proteins inside called hormone receptors. When hormones attach to the hormone receptors, the cells grow with these receptors. A pathologist determines the hormone receptor status by testing the tumor tissue removed during the biopsy, hormone receptor positive or hormone receptor negative. HER2 positive, hormone receptor positive, which is estrogen receptor positive and progesterone receptor positive, and together they are HER2 positive. Breast cancers can have many receptors. Most, about two out of three, breast cancers are ICD HER2 positive. After a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, depending on the stage, IDC HER2 positive can be treated with hormone therapies. These include tamoxifen and the arimatase inhibitors, arimidex, femera, and arimicin. HER2 negative, hormone receptor negative is estrogen receptor negative, progesterone receptor negative, and together they are HER2 negative. 
Breast cancers can have few or no hormone receptors. Most, about two out of three, breast cancers are ICD HER2 positive. After a lumpectomy, mastectomy, preferably bilateral, in most cases, when someone is BRCA positive, a radical hysterectomy, radiation and or chemo will follow. HER2 negative breast cancers are not treated with hormone therapies because they do not have hormone receptors. Sometimes a breast cancer is positive for estrogen receptors, but negative for progesterone receptors because current hormone therapies are designed to treat ER positive cancers. These cancers are treated the same as breast cancers that are positive for both hormone receptors. Short and long-term consequences. When IDC victim has been given a clean bill of health and is said to be in remission, which is cancer free, they should always be very alert to their bodies. It's not a matter of if IDC will come back, it's a matter of when it will come back. An IDC survivor can be in remission for as long as 15 years and have a recurrence. The Michelle Graham was established following the untimely death of my little sister, Michelle Blouser Standridge, a young wife and mother. Michelle, at 36, succumbed to breast cancer in 2009. During her three-year battle, Michelle was always thinking of others and reminded them to get their mammograms. To continue Michelle's legacy, the Michelle Graham, a nonprofit organization, was established through our church. Funded by annual fundraisers and donations, the Michelle Graham has raised over $200,000 to assist women without insurance or in financial crisis to obtain mammography testing. We also have partnered up with local radiology and imaging centers that have been overwhelmingly generous with their services. Michelle was BRCA1 positive and was diagnosed IDC triple negative HER2 negative. Her treatments were double mastectomy, full hysterectomy, followed with several rounds of chemo and radiation. Our mom is also BRCA1 positive, diagnosed IDC triple negative, HER2 negative, double mastectomy, full hysterectomy, and chemo. She followed with renal cell carcinoma, had a radical nephrectomy on May 19th of 2016, and is now in full remission.